So, the song says that only God can fill the deepest longing of our hearts. And He's the only one who can breathe in me a new life. No one but you, Lord, can satisfy the longing in my heart. Revelation reveals to us that our God is a God who was, and is, and is to come. A God who is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The Bible calls him the Ancient of Days. Oh Lord, in Jesus' name, you came into my life. Oh, Lord, you call to 
Let's take this time to pray. Father, we surrender ourselves to your hands this evening. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You know the past, the present and the future at the same time. And nothing in our life is hidden from your sight. And we can be rest assured if we give our life into your hands. God who knows our future will secure it. God who knows our future assures us that the present is also in his hands. The past is also in your hands. And Father, all that has happened, all that we have done, which are evil, which are wicked, you forgive. And Father, you can work it out that all these things can become good for us when we love God and we are called according to your purpose. And Father, we surrender our lives into your hands. We don't know what the future holds, but we trust in a God who makes our presence glorious, can also make our future glorious. Thank you, O Lord, for changing our lives, for touching our hearts, for speaking to our hearts. Pray that this evening you would continue to train us, equip us, cleanse us, guide us. Help us to trust in the ancient of days, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening on the Grassroots Study. We are looking through the book of Revelation and we are in Lucky 13. Revelation chapter 13. <coughs> so today we're going to handle one of the biggest famous numbers that the Bible has thrown to many people. You know, it's a fascination. For many people it is a mystery. And uh, for us also it's a mystery. But then some people have seemed to have the good hold of it. You know, movies especially. And books, of course, they have these so much fascination with this number called 666, the number of the beast. Right? So sometimes and some, somebody has told me about uh, you know, the number of the beast uh, sending a, 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 a chill over their spine <laughs> when they hear of that. Some per person actually complained that uh, there was a time when India had only four digits, you know, uh, telephone number, four digit telephone number. And uh, three of the digits happened to be 666. And they said, ah, oh, you, my number is the number of the devil. Okay, Actually, the number was 2666. So, but then you notice only the three sixes. You know. Some people, you know, they, they are afraid when they get the number in their car, you know, registration number. And there they are, KL01BH666. Okay. Car will be sold or, you know, the number will be exchanged. Some people pay money to get that number also, but then most of the people who are normal would not like to have that number. Right? So just like how people are afraid of the number 13, some people are afraid of the number 666. Right? So I remember one, one person who, who went to the corporation and got his number changed because his her house number was 666. And at last, after repeated, repeated requests of almost all three or four years, he repeatedly requested them. At last, they relented and they said, okay, your number will be changed. So, does it pose any any threat to us? What, what is the significance of this number? And why are people so afraid of it? That's what we're going to look at today. So, it's going to be very interesting because we're going to, we're going to just unravel the second beast. Okay. The last week we saw in uh, chapter 13 verses 1 to 10 as we were looking we saw a lot of things happen to the first beast right we saw that uh, uh, there was this beast that was rising out from the sea and it had 10 horns and 7 heads and 10 diadems 10 crowns on its horns and blasphemous names on its heads okay and the beast that i saw was like a leopard we saw the four animals feet like a bear's uh, and mouth like a lion's and uh, it had the, the dragon gave it power and his throne and uh, great authority. So we saw the amalgamation. The fourth one was the amalgamation of all the three beasts put together. Three animals put together. Leopard, bear and lion. And then we saw one of its heads seemed to have a mortal wound. And the wound was healed. And the whole earth 
marveled, wonder. Okay, that was the first thing we saw last week, right? The terrified world will wonder at the rise of the beast, how quickly it rises to power, how how great an authority this beast has. That is what caused what caused a lot of wonder. And the wonder was also caused by the healing of the mortal wound. See, the mortal wound must be very important. That's why, uh, you know, John mentions it three times in this chapter. You'll find it in verse 3. And then again in verse 12, you'll find it. You know, it exercises all the authority of the first beast in its presence and makes the earth its inhabitants worship the first beast whose mortal wound was healed. So again, it repeats it in 12th verse. And then again in 14th verse, so three times John repeats it. And by the signs that it is allowed to work in the presence of the beast that deceives those who dwell on the earth, telling them to make an image of, for the beast that was wounded by the sword and yet lived. Okay, wounded, 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 three times. The wound was sword inflicted. Okay, sword could be the word of God. This actually talks about a beast who was, you know, down because of the wound. It rising a bit. It is like the resurgence. Mortal wound means almost got completely killed, annihilated. But then slowly rose back to normal health, recouped, okay, or you know got uh, uh, its strength back. That is why it, you know, that mortal wound is very very important. Okay, so it happened sometime in the past, and then it comes back to strength again. So the resurgence. It could be that the resurgence talks about the Roman kingdom being dead, the system of the Roman Empire being dead, again rising back to power. Okay, So a dead kingdom coming back to power. That could be why the world was wondering, okay, how, how can the system come back? How can there be a rise of the old system? Okay, So the Roman Empire, which is not completely destroyed, it was mortally wounded, again rises back to power. Now, if you have to understand this in a little bit detail, okay, it is important that we jump a little ahead. Okay, Jump to chapter 17 and verses 9 to 13 and gives you a little clue about what the wound is and how the beast got back to power. Okay, So, uh, Revelation chapter 17 verses 9 to 13. I'll read it. This calls for a mind with wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman is seated. There are also seven kings, five of whom have fallen. One is, the other has not yet come. When he does come, he must remain only a little while. As for the beast that was and is not, it is an eighth, but it belongs to the seventh. And it goes to destruction. And the ten horns that you saw are ten kings who have not yet received royal power, but they are to receive authority as kings for one hour together with the beast. These are for one mind and they hand over their power and authority to the beast. They will make war on the lamb and the lamb will conquer them for he is the lord of lords and king of kings and those with him are called the chosen and faithful. See? So this passage kind of makes it help us to un helps us to understand that this beast has something to do with the previous world system. Okay, There's a previous world system. There's seven hence, five that was there is no more and then one that is and one that is to come. Okay. So it has something to do with world powers coming up. So the one who sits on the seven mountains is actually Rome. You know, Rome was built on seven mountains. So if Rome has been mortally wounded, then it rises back to power and the eighth one is actually part of the seven, which means it is part of the seven, but it's an eighth one. So there is a discontinuity and there is a continuity. So uh, which shows that, you know, uh, this, the eighth is actually part of the same group, but it's a new power altogether. Okay, it's, a, it's part of the old power, that was the seven heads. But then now it is, it's a new one, but it's still connected to the old. See? So that shows a resurgence, that shows a coming back to strength. Okay? So a new power has rise, risen up and it has uh, it has some connection with the past seven heads. Okay. Then again, this eighth has also risen up so that it, there will be destruction only. This eighth is also going to be destroyed by whom? By the lamb who will conquer the king of kings and the lord of lords. Okay. 
and this authority is going to be only for a little time. Now, what authority is it? The ten horns that you see saw are ten kings. You see, they have not yet come. The ten kings could be ten ten powers. Some people said, you know, some some time back that it was the European Union because there were ten countries in the European Union. Okay, so they said it it could be the European Union that has come to power. But then uh, slowly the number increased from the European Union. It became twelve and then thirteen. And then people said, okay, that may not be the European Union. Now people have uh, the countries have begun to fall and off, fall off that European Union, and so they are saying that it could be gained with the European Union. No, we don't know. We don't. Know. These are all speculations made on contemporary politics. Situation can change any time, right? So we don't know. If it, but we we understand that there are ten powers, ten nations who are going to support this beast. He's going to be a political power, and he's going to rise up as the leader of these ten federation of countries. Okay. So the resurgent king. The resurgent Antichrist would be a leader who has political power, vested on him by ten uh, countries under him. Okay, there is a union under him. So it will be like you know, United States of America. It will be like United States of the Antichrist. Okay, they will be supporting him. They will give him all support, and this person will rise to power as a political leader. Okay, so that is why the world is wondering about his sudden rise to power. How he, uh, you know, flexes this kind of authority, and uh, also his, uh, you know, fame. All these things will suddenly come up out of the blue, and that's why he's going to be. Uh, there's going to be a lot of wonder. Then we see that there is going to be worship. There is going to be worship. Verse four. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and jewels. Sorry, I'm in the wrong chapter. Chapter thirteen, verse four, and they worshipped the dragon, for he had given his authority to the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, "Who is like the beast, and who can fight against it?" See, there'll be worship towards this beast. See, Satan wants worship. We saw that last week, you know, and he will get it through the beast. He wanted to be worshipped in heaven, but then that was not possible. Right? That was not possible. He was now. He's now even out of heaven. So the next possible place. Is the temple, and temple worship is going to come in verse eleven onwards. Okay, but now he's already, you know, being worshipped through the antichrist. Okay, so the second beast that you're going to see in verse eleven onwards is going to organize and promote the worship of the antichrist. Okay, so he will make an official religion for the antichrist. And that religion will be the religion, official religion of the whole world. That's what the second beast is going to do. Verses eleven to eighteen. Right? We'll read that portion and then we'll get a little more pic picture on that. Right? Then I saw another beast rising out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb, and it spoke like a dragon. It exercises all the authority of the first beast in its presence and makes the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast, whose mortal wound was healed. It performs great signs, even making fire come down from heaven to earth. In front of people, and by the signs that it is allowed to work in the presence of the beast, it deceives those who dwell on earth, telling them to make an image for the beast that is wounded by the sword and yet lived. It was allowed to give breath to the image of the beast, as that the image of the beast might even speak and might cause those who would not worship the image of the beast to be slain. Okay, so worship is one of the primary aims that Satan has by bringing the Antichrist. He is going to achieve that, and by bringing the second beast, he is going to achieve it even. Popularity, it'll it'll become spread all over the world. All right, but before we go there, let's finish this verse five and six. The beast was given a mouth uttering haughty and blasphemous words, and it was allowed to exercise authority for forty-two months. See, this talks about words. Okay, given a mouth uttering blasphemies, words. So there is wonder, there is worship, and there is words. See, all great dictators rose to power by using the gift of their words. You know, orators. Great speakers, you would find them, you know, th throughout history. Great spokespeople or spokespersons have actually swayed crowds and nations. You remember, you know, uh, when uh, Shakespeare wrote the Julius Caesar, uh, these two men who 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 give a speech. Uh, Mark Antony allows Brutus to take the first step, and Brutus speaks, and he says uh, he he uh, addresses all the people, and he he sways them towards the cause of the conspirators. They are the ones who have killed Caesar, and he sways the whole crowd towards him when Brutus speaks. And soon after Brutus speaks, Mark Antony comes up and he says, 
friends, Romans countrymen, I have come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. And then he goes on praising Caesar. He says, I have not come to praise him, but he goes on to praise Caesar's achievements, one by one by one, reminding them that everything that Caesar did was for you guys, for you people. And he slowly sways the crowd towards his side. See? And they start attacking the conspirator. They, attacking, they start attacking Brutus and they start attacking all the guys who killed Julius Caesar. See? The word of mouth, how it can sway crowds. Adolf Hitler did this during his time. He was a great speaker and he was able to move a whole nation towards Nazism. See? That is possible. And even in India, we see that, you know, great leaders with great gift of the gab, they're able to sway people towards their cause. Recently, you know, there was this uh, proclamation that, you know, somebody, one of the politicians in Kerala, he had actually said something to instigate a crowd to go on a riot. And action had to be taken against that minister who, who instigated the crowd, you see. So these kind of things, you know, people can do it by the, by the words that they speak. Now, when it speaks blasphemy, Always understand that you know, they are not going to come out out and out cursing God, saying you know, but they are going to say words which will, which will put man on an equal pedestal with God. That is what blasphemy. You see, blasphemy is man claiming to be God. So this person, the Antichrist, would actually place himself on a pedestal equal to God, and then sway people towards his side. But then he will also do be doing the other side of it. He will be blaspheming his name, his dwelling, uh, that is those who dwell in heaven. Okay, so which means uh, 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 he will address, uh, uh, the, he will blaspheme God, he will blaspheme God's name, he will blaspheme God's tabernacle, that is God's heaven, and also the people who live in that, that is the saints. See? So, Satan has been recently cast out from heaven. So we can understand his, you know, agitation, he can understand why he is so bitter against it. So this is expected. His retaliation towards God and heaven and the people of heaven. See? So Satan will make the beast a great orator. And his through his words, he will sway nations towards him. See? And that's what he's going to do. By the gift of the words, he's going to turn people towards the uh, Antichrist and his cause. And finally, there will be War, that's what we saw last time, right? Finally, there will be war. Verses 7 to 10 says there will be war. War against his people. God has allowed it. And he will also defeat God's people. Some will be captured. Some will be martyred. But definitely, they are going to have a very, very difficult time. During the rise of the beast, saints are going to have a lot of, lot of suffering, a lot of persecution. And Revelation verse 1-9 reminds us, Revelation 1 9. What is our reaction to that? I, John, your brother and partner in the tribulation and the kingdom and the patient endurance that are in Jesus. See? Our reaction to the persecution would be patient endurance. So saints will not deny the Lord. Instead, they will exercise patient endurance. Throughout the time of persecution, they will hold on by holding on. They will hold on to the Lord. They will hold on to his promises. They will hold on to their faith. And they will not give up the fight. So that is how they are going to endure patiently throughout that time. All right. And so then verse 10 says the world will be divided. The whole population of the world will be divided. And those who are saved, whose names are there in the book of God, they will not submit to the beast. And those who are lost, it says here, the ones who will be slain with the sword, with the sword must be slain. See? So, there is, there is a segregation. Verse 8 says, all who dwell on earth will worship it. Actually, the translation should come, all the earth dwellers. Those who dwell with earth on their mind. Worldly people. People who dwell with world on their mind. Those people will worship the beast and do whatever he wants. See? So, those who live for the world they will submit to the beast and his rule. Those who submit to the Lord will not submit to the beast. And they will live separately. They will die separately. That is how the Bible segregated the two, two groups. Okay, And then again it says, here is a call for the endurance and faith of the saints. Okay, 
So patient endurance is required from the saints. Now let's go over to the second beast. Then I saw another beast rising out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb and it spoke like a dragon. Okay, two horns. Okay, now the beast from the sea is the Antichrist. And the beast from the earth, the Bible in the book of Revelation calls him the false prophet. Okay, in the other references, he is called the false prophets. False prophet is Revelation chapter 16 verse 3. The second angel poured out his bowl into the sea and it became like the blood of a corpse and every living thing. Sorry. Uh, Revelation chapter 16 verse 13. Revelation chapter 16 verse 13. And I saw coming out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet three unclean spirits like frogs. Okay. So here the second beast is called the false prophet. Then again in verse chapter 19 and verse 20. Chapter 19 and verse 20. And the beast was captured and with it the false prophet who in its presence had done the signs by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped its image. These two were thrown alive into the lake of fire that burns with sulfur. That's the end of the false prophet. And again reminding us 20, chapter 20 verse 10. Revelation 20 verse 10. And the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur where the beast and the false prophet were and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. So in the other passages where it is quoted, the second beast is titled as the false prophet. So what do we see here? See the dragon or Satan is the counterfeit father. Okay, The counterfeit father. See Satan can only duplicate what he has seen, what he has known. Okay, And he has seen this trinity in heaven, the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost. And he wants to duplicate it. And he becomes the father, okay, the counterfeit father. He says, no, I will be like the most high. So he will be like the most high. He will be like the father in heaven. He, Satan will be the counterfeit father. And then the beast from the sea will become the counterfeit Messiah, counterfeit Christ. The counterfeit you know, uh, Christ, that is the beast from the sea. And then the beast from the earth will become the counterfeit Holy Spirit. That is a false prophet. Okay, so th there we see the satanic trinity. The beast from the sea is the counterfeit Christ and the beast from the earth acts like the counterfeit Holy Spirit. And his identity is the false prophet. Okay, so why do I say that? Because, see, his working is very similar to the working of the Holy Spirit. That is why we are saying it's the counterfeit Holy Spirit. Okay, now John, turn with me to John chapter 16 and verses 7 to 15. John chapter 16. Sorry. Verses 7 to 15. You will see the working of the Holy Spirit. Right. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For I, if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Right? So, the ministry of the Holy Spirit is to glorify Christ, to exalt Christ, to lift up Christ. Then, it is the Holy Spirit who leads people to trust in Jesus Christ. And it is the Holy Spirit who, who leads people to worship Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. So, it is the ministry of the Holy Spirit to glorify Jesus Christ. It is the Holy Spirit's role to lead people to worship Jesus Christ. And to trust in Jesus Christ as their salvation. So, so this is the one working or the functioning of the Holy Spirit. And same way the false prophet will try to point to the Antichrist and to glorify him and his image. And he will compel the people to worship Satan through the beast. That's what he's going to do. He's going to lead people to the Antichrist. He's going to lead people to worship Satan through the beast. 
So he will keep on exalting the Antichrist. That is his function. So that is why he is the counterfeit Holy Spirit. And this is the Satanic Trinity that we can see in chapter 13. Okay. Now, when we see horns, I told you it suggests authority. Okay. It suggests authority. So there are two horns for this beast that is rising from the earth. So two horns would show that it has it has got authority, but the authority is not political because there is no crown on it. Okay, so this could be a, a religious leader who rises up. Now, because it is the earth, we saw that the sea stands for Gentiles. So earth could mean the Jews. Okay, if it is the Jews, the unsaved Jews. So, say the, the false prophet could be from among the Jews. Could be. But at the same time, he's a religious leader. So if uh, he has to have his uh, functioning, he is actually functioning from Jerusalem. Okay, The temple is actually mentioned below that. So which means that he is very much in control of the temple and the worship there. Okay, So Satan would be uh, uh, entrusting the political authority to the beast from the sea, the Antichrist. And the religious authority could be this person. He also has a say in economic matters. We'll see that later on. Okay. He has a say. The false prophet has a say on economic matters. He's going to combine both religion and economy together and bring out something really, really blasphemous. Okay. So the absence of a crown shows that he's not a political ruler. Okay. And Jesus also warned us about false prophets. If you turn to Matthew chapter 24, Matthew 24, verse 11. Matthew 24 and verse 11. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. Again in verse chapter 24, verse 24. For false Christs and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. So God has already promised us that there will be false prophets, false Christs also. See? And this is going to be the worst false prophet ever. Okay, why? Because he will have the character of a lamb. Bible says, two horns like a lamb, and it spoke like a dragon. You see, so it has the it will have the character of a lamb, but the voice of a dragon. You see, which means it will be a it will be a ferocious voice. The whole world will listen to that voice. You see, so th this is going to be a great deceiver. The false prophet is going to be a great deceiver who will appear like a lamb, you know, very gentle and harmless, but he will deceive the whole world like a dragon. Okay. So when Jesus was ministering itself, there were demands for great signs. You remember the Jews coming and asking Jesus, show us a sign, show us a sign. But Jesus refused. He said only one sign will be given to you and that is his death on the cross and his resurrection. Right? Uh, the 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 uh, sign of Jonah when he was in the belly belly of the fish for three days and three nights and he says that is the only sign that's going to be given to you. Jesus refused to show any other signs and wonders in the sky or in the heavens, but the false prophet will show signs and he will show wonders and that will lead people astray. That will show that will lead people astray. Okay. So far, if the false prophets were able to do signs and deceive people, this is going to be the ultimate. He's going to do great signs and wonders. And they are going to lead people into worshipping the devil. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 9. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 9. The coming of the lawless one is by activity of Satan with all power and false signs and wonders and with all wicked deception for those who are perishing because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. Refuse to love the truth and so be saved. So the unsaved people will be easily deceived. He will try to deceive even the elect. And then verse 13, it performs great signs even making fire come down from heaven to earth in front of people. We have seen that in the Bible, right? So here is a duplication of all, this, all the miracles that God has done in the past being done again. Fire from heaven. He will appear to be like the prophet Elijah. Right? When he brought fire from heaven. And then 
by signs that is allowed to work in the presence of the beast and deceives those who dwell on earth, telling them to make an image for the beast that was wounded by the sword and yet lived. It was allowed to give breath to the image. Imagine having an inanimate object you know, coming to life. That would be one of the big signs. You know, when God raises up his two witnesses from the dead, the satanic trinity is going to counter that by raising a dead image to life. Okay. Dead image means lifeless image to life. Okay. So, why is he doing that? He is doing that so that he will get the worship of the people. You see. If this false prophet can bring an inanimate object to life, that will be something that you know people will be saying, Whoa, we have not seen this kind of thing. So, Satan will be worshipped. Where will he be worshipped? He'll be worshipped in the temple. So, the image is the abomination that causes desolation that is spoken of in Daniel. Daniel chapter 9 verse 27 and Daniel chapter 11 verse 36. Daniel chapter 9 verse 27 and he shall make a strong covenant with many for one week and for half of the week he shall put an end to sacrifice and offering and on the wing of abominations shall come one who makes desolate until the decreed end is poured out on the desolation. So the abomination that causes desolation would be the image of the beast that comes from the sea. You know? He would be placed in the temple. The beast would be somewhere else but the image would be animated so that it would be worshipped and then that would be done in the temple of Jerusalem. See, the rebuilt temple in Jerusalem. Chapter 11 and verse 36. Chapter 11, Daniel chapter 11 and verse 36. And the king shall do as he wills. He shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god and shall speak astonishing things against the god of gods. He shall prosper till the indignation is accomplished for what is decreed shall be done. So there will be worship at the temple in Jerusalem. Daniel chapter 8 verses 9 to 14. Out of one of them came a little horn which grew exceedingly great towards the south, towards the east and towards the glorious land. It grew great even to the host of heaven and some of the host of and some of the stars it threw down to the ground and trampled on them. It became great even as great as the prince of the host. And the regular burnt offering was taken away from him and the place of his sanctuary was overthrown and a host will be given over to it together with the regular burnt offering because of transgression. It will throw truth to the ground and it will act and prosper. Okay, So this is about the worship in the temple up to verse 14 it says about that. See? Then I heard a holy one speaking and another holy one said to the one who for how long is the vision concerning the regular burnt offering transgression to make desolate and the giving over to the sanctuary and host to be trampled when he said to me for 2300 evenings and mornings then the sanctuary shall be restored to its rightful state. So the temple worship will be corrupted completely by the placing of the image and, an, and a call to worship that image. Okay, The abomination that causes desolation. Okay, So the false prophet the Bible says will do a lot of wonders. The Bible actually gives it a name. Uh, Revelation chapter 13 verse 13. It performs great signs even making fire come down from heaven to earth in front of people and by the signs that is allowed to work in the presence of the beast it deceives those who dwell on the earth. Then again in verse chapter 11 and verse 5 uh, and if anyone would harm them fire pours from their mouth and consumes their force. If anyone would harm them this is how he is doomed to be killed. We don't know how it is going to happen, but we know that you know it's going to be a terrible, terrible science, terrible, terrible wonders that are going to come out from these creatures or these people. Okay, so the beast will slay the two witnesses, and he will take over the temple, and the image will move and speak. That's going to be some great sign. See, so this is the last deception that is going to come. And how does it end? It ends with. You know, a mark. It causes all both small and great, both rich and poor, both free and slave to be marked on the right hand and on the forehead. Okay, right hand actually shows our work, our employment and our forehead shows the, the our thoughts, our, uh, our uh, area of thinking, you know, 
a meditation and all those things so what where people think and where people act how people think and how people work will be affected when the image will be given okay so your livelihood will be affected your thought process will be affected it will not allow you to think of anything else it will not allow you to reason it will not allow you to rational thought it will be your thoughts will be confined and your that means mind will be controlled and your work also will be controlled see it will be at the mercy of these uh, these bees okay we will be at the mercy of these bees if we get the mark then you get livelihood if you get the mark you can buy and sell if you don't get the mark you can't live you can't live see? they'll make life hard for people who do not get the mark see? so what does the bible say everyone you know, gets the mark except believers chapter 20 and verse 4 chapter 20 and verse 4 so then i saw thrones and seated on them were those to whom the authority to judge was committed also i saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for the testimony of jesus and for the word of god and those who had not worshiped the beast or its image and had not received its mark on their foreheads or their hands they came to life and reigned with christ for a thousand years see so the believers won't receive the mark which means they will die they will die a very gruesome death because the religion will be linked up with strong economic measures if you want to buy and sell necessary goods you will have to receive the mark so the only way is by submitting to the beast by worshiping him you know and then you receive the special mark 666 see throughout history we have seen kings rising up like this and demanding worship nebuchadnezzar required it people stood up believers stood up against him we saw daniel and we saw shadrach meshach and abednego stand up you know against him and then we see during caesar's time caesar was worshiped as king and god and throughout history we see men and women rising up to take up authority false christ who claimed worship from men who demanded worship from men and here the finally this antichrist is going to be a superpower and he's going to demand people's worship and they'll be required to receive this mark 666 without which they cannot have any business they cannot get and sell and buy things this are going to be hard times for people who will not take the mark it's going to be hard times now what is the 666 see people have so much fascination for this number but the only explanation that the bible can give us is man was created on the 6th day okay and that is why 6 is the number of man if 7 is perfection then he is one shot of perfection that is always man man will never be perfect on this side of heaven we cannot be perfect 6 is a human number which is just short of perfection okay now creation is made for man you can see 6s all over 24 hours of a day is 6 into 4 12 months of a year is 6 into 2 so we see 6s everywhere so something has to do with man so 666 is the number of man now there is a fascination for numbers all around us if you have seen the aadhar number okay when i first got the aadhar number the announcement for the aadhar number everybody has to take it i was wondering you know can everyone in india get this aadhar number i mean it's not practical because india is such a big country they have this social security number in us and by 1970s they had numbered all their citizens in us okay 1970s and 80s but it did not catch up in india at all because we don't have social security you don't have insurance policies like that but now over a period of 10 years this aadhar has come to stay okay i'm not saying the aadhar number is something anti christian or something like that. no uh, people are fascinated by that but that's not what i mean i mean that it is possible that the future is all computerized no so future being computerized it has to come to numbers and people will be calculated on the basis of numbers people will be reckoned on numbers okay you and i will be just a number and everything will become into a system where number is the database and by numbers you can actually sort out people so people who believe in god and people who don't believe in god will be segregated and the ones who believe in god will not receive this number see so it is nothing to do with aadhar or it is nothing to do with for the time being but soon a numbering system is going to come where you and i will be numbered 
no, those who are there in the tribulation will be numbered as those who are against the Antichrist. Okay? And they will have a tough time. Those who have the mark, they will have a good time. They will have a, 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 a no problem time. Why? Because they have submitted to the beast. Okay. So, people's names have been related to this number. You know, they have uh, they have tried to find out that you know uh, Domitian, the the Caesar who came after that was actually you know six six six, and they said that Nero was six six six, and they they have this numbering system which will take you know the names of the per person, the character numbers of it, and then uh, add it and multiply it, and all. somehow they will reach the six six six. During my time, it was Saddam Hussein, uh, the reader, uh, the the dictator of uh, Iraq, was found to be you know six six six, and I I just want to tell you that. People throughout history, like even Martin Luther, they have made, you know, deciphered his name as the Antichrist name, okay, which is not true at all. And there is that is not the way to understand this number at all. That is a superstitious thing and that is a very false way of taking the focus of what is the real matter here, okay. So we are not here to identify the Antichrist. We don't know. Antichrist will be revealed only during the tribulation time. And it's not, we don't have to be preoccupied with all these things. These are all sensational things. It is being passed on through WhatsApp all the more now because of the pandemic. Please don't fall for these uh, you know, idiotic things. These are not healthy. These are not um, wise. What the Bible speaks is that this person will be a glorification of man's limited perfection. Okay, He'll be everything that a man ought to be. Okay, Man's expectation will be fulfilled in this, this person. Man's uh, you know, uh, economic things will be united under this man. Man's uh, political aspirations will be united and submitted to this man. And this man will rule over all of mankind. And the people who belong to God will not submit to him. Because he is imperfect, he is only a man. They will not worship him because he is only a man, he is only a created being. They will not surrender their lives to him. Okay? And God's people will stand, God's people will have patient endurance, and they will be overcomers during that time. They will die a martyr's death, but they will still be overcomers, according to God's book. Okay, so this is what 666 is all about. So let's not be caught up in the sensationalism of it. Let us submit to the, the revelation of the Bible. And let's submit that, you know, uh, thank God for every generation. There are, uh, you know, challenges that we have to stand up for. And there are challenges that we have to overcome. And as faithful believers, we have to be patiently enduring the persecution that we face. At the same time, standing up for what we believe. Declaring to the world that, you know, God is, we are on God's side. And God is for us and he, who can be against us. So our, our, our confidence is in the Lord and what he has done on the cross. Not on our own abilities, not on what uh, man can achieve, not on the perfection on this side of heaven. We are depending on him daily to bring us to that perfection where we ultimately meet him. Okay. So let's rely on him. Let us trust him. Let us not be caught up by all these signs and wonders. Let us not be caught up with all the sensationalism of 666 and the Antichrist and all those things. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this time that you speak to our hearts through the word. Help us not to be caught up by all the sensationalism, the number of 666 and the Antichrist and the beast and all those things. But we know the Bible speaks about it and it's true. And we submit ourselves that we will be found faithful throughout all this. Without compromise, in this generation, we will be the people who will stand up for Christ. We give you all glory. Praise and thanks. In Jesus' name we pray.